My sister enables her kids' criminal behavior. Now they're ruining the neighborhood and I call the cops. When I came home from work I noticed my shed door was open and the padlock that I used to keep it shut was broken. And I had a lot of bags full of soda cans in there. I tend to drink a lot of soda, so I've built up a lot of cans. And I was going to cash them in at the bottle drop soon. There was more than just my cans missing from the shed too. I was missing some gardening tools, a machete, and a gas can. I went to check my security cameras and early in the morning right after I left for work I saw my three nephews break into my shed using a hammer to smash the lock, and taking the cans, as well as the other stuff. I called my sister and she and her husband denied their kids did it. Till I showed up at their house with the footage from my cameras. They were furious with their kids for robbing me and skipping school to do it. I got the other stuff back. The gas can was emptied though, but they'd already cashed all of the cans. I wanted the money from the cans and my nephews had already spent it all on video games and junk food. I demanded to know how much they got from the cans and it was nearly $200. I told my sister she now owes me over $200 for the cans and the broken padlock. My sister and Bill went from being angry at their kids to making excuses for them, and then being angry at me for wanting that money back when I know they have three kids and a mortgage. I said it was either that or I go to the police and press charges. They told me to get out, and I said they have two days to decide how to pay me back before I go to the cops. My nephews are thieves and have stolen from me before. That's why I got the cameras. What my nephews did was most definitely wrong. But I also know my sister and Bill can't really afford to pay me back. And they're blowing up my phone and calling me heartless for giving them the ultimatum when I know they are nearly broke after the holidays. Ida for doing that? Update 1, well I went to the police. I tried to work with my sister and Bill when I called them this morning because I didn't want to wait till after they were done with work to speak with them. Not only did they refuse any sort of suggested way of repaying me, they actually said that it was my fault for having the cans there to begin with. They said I tempted my nephews with the money. I was enraged and said I was done with them. Then they started blowing up my phone all over again. My eldest nephew sent me a picture of him holding a soda can and giving me the finger. So that was it. I went to the police station and filed a report. Gave them a copy of the video footage of my nephew stealing from my shed. I gave them the broken lock they smashed. Showed them all of the texts, which were screenshotted and also given as evidence. Hell, I even gave them the photo my eldest nephew sent me of him flipping me off. I don't know if my nephews have been arrested yet. But I'm assured they will be. Perhaps some community service will change their attitudes. I did tell police that I found it worrisome that my nephews had taken the machete. But it was as I thought. They classified it as a tool. Especially since they took a lot of other actual tools. Other than the machete, they also some gardening shears, a steel rake, two shovels, one of them being one of those folding camping ones, a full two gallon gas can, a cheap power drill I got for like $5 used, an electric hedge trimmer, and a small electric chainsaw that was also used. They didn't touch the lawn mower, weed whacker, extension cords, or the old radio I had in there. No idea why they took what they did. But I guess they figured they could resell them or something. But I got all of that back, minus the gas that was in the gas can. No idea what they used it for. But it was old gas anyway. After they first broke into my shed, they took what they could by hand. And then they came back with some shopping carts that I'm guessing they also stole. But it took them a few trips to get all of the cans. And they didn't bother to even try and close the door when they were done. Either way though my nephews are now in trouble for trespassing, larceny and harassment. I'm sure either today or tomorrow my phone is gonna be blowing up like mad when the cops come for those kids. But I said it was my hill to die on, and I meant it. I don't even care if I get the money back now. They had their chance. I've already replaced the lock on the shed with a much stronger one. And the machete will no longer be kept in the shed. I've also talked to a few of my neighbors about what happened. They told me cans have actually been going missing around the neighborhood lately. If anybody had a bag of cans sitting out, it'd get stolen. Can't say if my nephews were the culprits. But if they were, then they've been doing this for months. I've also spoken with my relatives. And they're fed up with my sister and Bill too. So they're all on my side at least. Which is good to know. I was worried they'd turn on me since I filed the police report. But no, I just got a lot of good for you and it's about damn time those kids face some justice. I wasn't the only one in the family they stole from. Many in the comments tried to say I should offer that my nephews work off the $200. There's no way I was going to do that. The little shits hate doing any work they don't want to do and will just stand around griping and acting like the world is against them. And they'd have to be supervised the entire time. Which is another thing I don't want to do. Plus, I banned them from my house for good reason. The theft started with food and snacks. And then went on to DVDs and video games. That made me start putting my initials on cases and discs with permanent markers. So I was able to show when my nephews had taken something of mine. They tried the oh he let us borrow them excuse a few times. But I always called bullshit. And then made them return the stuff they took which they always acted like I was a jerk for doing. And then when they were made to apologize to me each time, they were the fakest apologies I've ever heard. 
The final straw that banned my nephews from my house was when they used the spare hidden key to my house to get in and stole three six packs of my favorite blood orange beer from my fridge, along with raiding my kitchen for anything else they wanted. One of them took a dump in my bathroom and not only didn't flush, but also intentionally pissed on the floor. They tried to say it wasn't them. But I knew it was. The beer they stole was even hidden in their room. My sister and Bill barely punished them and basically gave me an equivalent to boys will be boys. Then berated me when I said they and their kids were no longer welcome at my home ever again. And that's all why I got the cameras. When I had them installed I told no one. Which was a very smart idea because my nephews had no idea they were there when they broke into my shed. Guess I was their easiest target. When I can afford it, I plan to get more cameras inside my house too. Update 2, but my nephews were indeed arrested on Saturday. Police came to their house and my sister and Bill were forced to let them in because they had a warrant. Apparently all three of my nephews went from being cocky little shits to crying like babies when they were being put in cuffs. I know this because a neighbor I'm acquainted with that sort of friends with my sister was there to see it. And shortly after the arrest my sister and Bill were blowing up my phone again. They weren't able to get their kids out of jail till Monday morning. And now the boys are being charged with larceny, willful destruction of property slash vandalism, and harassment. The police took this whole case pretty seriously as there has been complaints about my nephews for some time. But nothing was proven until now. The past few months bags of cans have actually been going missing all over the area. Don't know if it was my nephews or not. But they're likely suspects. And with word spreading of their arrest, let's hope other neighbors with security cameras come forward with more footage. My sister and Bill showed up at my house too. I refused to open the door and told them that this all happened because they are enablers who refuse to hold their kids accountable for their actions. That made them just scream and pound on my door more till I threatened to call police on them too. And since I've done it already, they know I mean it now. So they left without any more trouble. But they went back to blowing up my phone. I didn't block my sister or Bill. Instead I decided to just save all of the messages they send me because I've made the decision to take them to small claims court over this. I don't really need or want the money, and I've already replaced the destroyed padlock with a much better one. However the kids aren't the only ones who need to be taught a lesson. In the end I hope I put them in enough of a hole that they learn not to screw with me ever again. I also have the full support of my family on this. My parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. They're all supporting me in this because my nephews have stolen from them too. And after banning my nephews from my house, some of them did the same. I'm going to push for my nephews to get community service. And the reason why isn't just because it's a good idea, but also because I know that they'll hate that the most. Whenever made to do any kind of work they don't want to do, they just stand around griping and act like the whole world is against them. So hardly anything ever gets done. Perhaps a few hundred hours of unpaid work will teach them some manners. They've been spoiled far too much. Update 3, well this is stupidly anticlimactic. I figured that my sister and Bill were gonna dig their heels in even deeper after the shit that's already gone down. But they actually caved. I filed a lawsuit against them in small claims for the actions of their kids. In the suit I was asking for $500. This was for the stolen cans, the destroyed lock, the cost of the replacement lock, which was a much better and more expensive one, the cost of filing with the courts, and emotional damages for the harassment. A friend whose father is a lawyer gave me a free consultation and said I have a very strong case because of the camera footage I have of both my nephews stealing from me, and of my sister and Bill pounding on my front door. Plus all of the messages they sent me. When my sister and Bill were served, they called me freaking out. They said I couldn't do this to them. So I retorted that this is the price they are paying for not parenting their kids and letting them become entitled little thieves. And if they wish to speak to me again, it will either be when I see them in court, or if they decide to pay me the $500 I'm suing for. Then I hung up on them. Well yesterday evening I was having some friends over after work. We were just chilling out and watching a movie. None of us were in the mood for video games since we were tired from the day. And we just wanted a chill evening. But then I got a knock at the door. When I looked outside, there was my sister and Bill. And they looked very unhappy. I opened the door, but left the screen door shut. Then asked them what they were doing at my house. They told me that they're tired of fighting because everyone is against them. And fully admitted how badly they effed up by letting this go as far as they did. And just wanted to make peace. My friends were standing in full view behind me. So there were witnesses to this. Bill then slid an envelope through a crack in the door that contained $500 in $50 bills. He said it was from his private savings account. Then told me from now on they'll make sure my nephews are duly punished for their actions. They didn't ask me to drop the charges. But pleaded with me to at least be lenient. I said I was only pushing for community service. Which is pretty lenient. And if we cooperate for that, then hopefully the judge will agree. They sighed and said they'd cooperate if that's all I wanted. Then left without making any sort of a fuss. My friends all congratulated me on holding my ground. Others in my family later did the same. That's when I found out from my parents that they actually threatened to disown my sister if she and her husband didn't make some changes for the better. So now they are. It may be a forced change. 
but it's the best we'll probably see out of them. My mom paid my sister and Bill a visit after they repaid me too. She told me that my nephews were not playing video games. In fact, every single video game related thing was put away somewhere. And so was the TV that my nephews would game and watch movies on. All three nephews were in their rooms most of the time and were very rude and unwelcoming to their grandmother. But my sister claims they are dealing with the situation. So yeah, I've dropped the lawsuit now that I've been paid what I wanted. But my nephews are still going to court for theft and are now getting the parenting they should have been getting long ago. I've also been assured that they will not be coming near my house again anytime soon and are strictly only to be either at school or at home. My nephews won't be welcome anywhere near my house for a long time to come. My sister and Bill are now basically forced to do the parenting they should have already been doing. And everyone else I on the family has been on my side about this because my nephews had basically gotten everyone to hate them. Update 4, to start off with, yes I did get more cameras. One I installed right above the shed. So it looks like I've got the whole area covered. I want to say that my sister and Bill, as well as my nephews have learned from this whole ordeal. But that's not entirely the case. Especially for my eldest nephew, who just couldn't let go of wanting revenge on me. And he stupidly tried to get it. Here's what happened. They didn't get more than 100 hours each because I'd been repaid by their parents when we settled out of court. So the judge pretty much fast-tracked the case. My nephews ended up picking up garbage and doing work around several local parks. And the man directing them I heard was a retired drill sergeant. So they had no fun whatsoever. My eldest nephew constantly showed his issues with authority and got into screaming matches with everyone who told him to work. His father had to be called over just to make the boy pick up a rake. The kid openly blamed me for his predicament and his brothers were both initially on his side. But after a while they realize that he's just crazy and entitled, and they no longer want any part of it. So my two younger nephews stopped following his lead because it finally clicked just how in the wrong they were. Problem is that my sister and Bill blamed me for the divide in their family, which didn't end well for them as no one in the family was on their side about it. Everything was put on them and their bad parenting. And without me to blame, they just became silent and bitter. Half the family don't want to associate with them, and now their own kids are divided because the eldest refuses to change. It got so bad that my eldest nephew resorted to something so incredibly dumb that you're not going to want to believe it. In the middle of the night he sneaked out and assaulted my house with a pair of his dad's claw hammers. I say a pair because he literally had one in each hand. The first thing he did was start smashing the new lock on my shed, and it didn't break. But he heavily damaged it to the point it was no longer usable and I had to later remove it with bolt cutters. He also did a lot of damage to the shed door with the hammer's claws. I awoke to the sounds of the hammers, and called the police after peeking out my bedroom window and seeing someone outside hitting the shed. Though I didn't realize it was him at first because he had his face covered with a creepy looking mask. He saw the bedroom lights come on and chucked one of the hammers through my window. There was broken glass everywhere, and I'm lucky I didn't cut my feet on any of it because I was barefoot. Then my nephew started beating on my back door with the remaining hammer. He did major damage breaking the knob and the window on the door, and also tore into the door itself with the hammer claw. I was worried the door wouldn't hold out, so I yelled police were on their way, and he took off before they arrived. The night vision on my camera showed it was him. He had a mask on, but was wearing his school hoodie, as well as his Nike shoes that were also pretty identifiable since his brothers don't have a pair like them. His fingerprints were also on the hammer he threw at my window. My nephews had already all been fingerprinted when they were arrested the first time. So police matched the ones on the hammer to him. When the cops came for my eldest nephew, he obviously denied it was him. But there's no one else it could have been. The other hammer was found in his room, along with the clothes and mask he wore. All of which were taken as evidence. The mask was of a Star Wars character I was told is called the Grand Inquisitor. This time though, his parents did nothing to try and protect him. And they didn't try to pass the blame on me either. They just let their son be taken away screaming. I wasn't there to see the arrest. But I was told by my sister that my eldest nephew was switching back and forth from crying that he didn't do anything wrong, to screaming that it was all my fault and he had to get back at me. The boy had to go through a serious mental evaluation and was found to be potentially bipolar. Doesn't really excuse what he did though. Later on when he was properly diagnosed as bipolar, he started blaming everything he did wrong on that. And acted like he should be vilified just for getting treatment for it. But he ended up having a month long stint in juvenile hall. They got my nephew properly medicated, and he pleaded guilty to forego court again in exchange for more community service and mandatory counseling, as well as probation this time. His dad came to my house and personally replaced the broken window and door. Though he barely said a word to me while doing it. My two younger nephews are still excluding their older brother from pretty much everything. And he still hasn't apologized for attacking my home either. He's also unfortunately repeating a school year because of how badly his grades tanked. Which his parents are still very unhappy about. My two younger nephews dropped by on their own in July to personally apologize to me. They said that they always just follow their brother's lead, and he made everything they were doing seem so fun. But the punishments for the crimes are not worth the kind of fun they were having. 
and they don't want anything to do with it anymore. They want their fun uncle back and asked if we could start over. I said we can, but they'll have to earn back my trust. Which they happily agreed to. My eldest nephew had his 17th birthday a few months ago, and basically got nothing. Not even a cake. It was part of his punishment for what he'd done. I can only imagine how much money he's cost his parents in the past year alone. He led his brothers to steal from me and then destroyed my bedroom window and back door. I imagine in total with the lawsuit I'd previously filed, and replacing both the door and window cost them over $1,000. Doors and windows are not cheap. Meanwhile my youngest nephew had his birthday a month after that, and got a new mountain bike among his gifts. This really upset my eldest nephew and he slashed the tires on the bike with a kitchen knife. Which landed him in even more trouble. I know a thing or two about fixing bikes, so I went out and bought new tubes and tires for the bike, and put them on it. So the bike is fine, and my nephew thanked me a lot for fixing it. My eldest nephew resorted to trying to run away because he wasn't being enabled anymore. He just walked out, got on his bike with a backpack full of stuff, and rode off. His parents quickly reported him missing because he left a goodbye letter that basically blamed me and his bipolar for all his problems. In the letter he stated that he can't wait till he's 18 to get away from us all. So he was doing us a favor by getting rid of himself sooner. But he came back three days later without his bike or backpack, and looking beat up. He wouldn't tell anyone what happened. We still don't know. But he was chewed out for continuously using me as a scapegoat for his personal issues, because blaming me was the first thing he did after he got back. I didn't make him steal from me, I didn't make him attack my house, I didn't make him run away. That was all him. And he nearly ended up back in juvie for running off because he violated his probation. But he got off easy somehow. Currently he spends his days pretty much in his room when not in school, or doing chores, or going to counseling. He finished his community service. But his probation will last till he's 18. He got some lenience for being diagnosed as bipolar. But it couldn't get him off the hook. And believe me, he tried many times. Once they told him what was wrong with him, it became his excuse for everything. But plenty of people go their whole lives with that same mental condition and never do the kinds of things he did. I've been mending things with my two younger nephews, but I don't want to be around the eldest at all. And the feeling is clearly mutual on his part. I've only seen him once in person the past few months, and he glared at me with more hate than I've ever seen from anyone before stomping away. He can't paint me as the villain anymore without being called out on it, so there isn't much he can do other than just try and get through this. For the most part he's totally shut down since school started. I'm told he barely speaks, even at school. My other nephews tell me he's getting laughed at and ostracized. Which I don't think is going to help him get better. My sister and Bill are also not on the best terms with me right now as well. But they can't exactly put any blame on me either. They know it was all on them and their bad parenting. I've basically forced them to be more active in their kids' lives. Which they should have been doing already. They complain a lot of being tired from work and keeping an eye on their kids. So whenever we talk as of late, it's always awkward and forced. They don't come to my house, or me to theirs. But we do see each other at my parents' house. And our mother demands we be civil there. Which I have no problem with. My two younger nephews have regained most of their privileges. They got their TV and video games back. But my eldest nephew isn't allowed on them at all. I'm told he's got some electronic entertainment in his room. But what kind I don't know. I just know he spends most of his time in there unless he has to be somewhere else. My eldest nephew is also not welcome pretty much anywhere in the family anymore. I've recently heard from my parents that they don't even want to see him on Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve this year because they are sick of his behavior and petty thievery. I guess I can understand that. But even I feel it's a bit harsh. My sister and Bill do as well because they are threatening to boycott if he can't come to either holiday. I can't stand that kid, and would not want him in my house either. So I can understand why they've made that decision. But I don't think excluding him from everything and everyone is going to make him better. It's going to take a long time for my eldest nephew to mend bridges. If they can even be mended at all. The way things stand, he may try running off again once he's of age. Unless the last time scared him too much to try it again. But hopefully things will get better for him in time if it's not too late to fix his behavior. I may not like him, but he's still my nephew, and I care. But I'm kinda powerless to do anything. So for now the most I can do is just keep my nose out of it and offer support where I can. Update 5, I was hoping to have a better update for everyone after the holidays, but things didn't really get better. They started too, and then went downhill again. It took some time, but everything is more or less okay now. I didn't post earlier because I thought it better to wait. I wrote most of this months ago, but decided I'd wait a little longer to see if the situation would improve. But then I waited too long and just plain forgot until recently. So here's hopefully the final update of the devil snake who tempted his nephews with a shed full of cans. I do a recap, but there's just too damn much for that. So if you want to know the rest, you'll have to go back and read it. To start this post off with, last year my sister and Bill went to Thanksgiving at Bill's parents' house instead of with my parents. My eldest nephew wasn't exactly on his best behavior over there either. But he didn't cause any trouble. At least, that's what they told everyone. 
My sister and Bill also had a long talk with our parents about how excluding my nephew would not help his mental state at the moment. And I also backed them on this because with the way things were going, all my nephew would feel is hate. So my parents relented and let him come to Christmas Eve. I, of course, got him a gift. But because I wanted to help him mentally get better, in early December I went out and bought him a used metallic green mountain bike at the local second-hand store. It needed a little bit of work, but was an excellent buy for 30 bucks. I also learned that since his good backpack was stolen, he was using an old one that belonged to one of his brothers. So I grabbed a used one at the same second-hand store for about 5 bucks. I fixed up the bike and washed the backpack, and when I presented them both to him on a Sunday, he seemed completely shocked I'd give him anything. And it also made him really awkward. But he took them both with a look that said, thanks and started using them right away to go to and from school like he did with his old bike and backpack. My sister and Bill were also pretty damn shocked I gave him gifts, let alone replace the stuff that was stolen from him when he ran away after he attacked my house with hammers. But the gifts had the effect I was hoping for. I was no longer the object of his rage. He really had been looking for any excuse to make me out to be the vile snake that ruined his life. But I'm not. When I next saw him, it was at the family Christmas Eve party. And while there, my sister and Bill made him apologize for putting all his anger on me. They loomed over him like shadows while he talked to me. He was told to look me in the eye repeatedly. And in his apology, he admitted that it wasn't my fault he was arrested. He egged me on, he stole from me, and he damaged my property. And he won't do it again. We shook hands, and he didn't make any trouble at the party at all. But his parents were like his shadows that entire evening. They didn't leave him alone at all. They might as well have had him on a leash. It was awkward, but I can understand why. They'd put a lot on the line just so he could be allowed to come to Christmas. At New Year's, though, things took a dive. My eldest nephew stole a bottle of champagne from his parents and drank it all fast while locked in the bathroom before anyone could stop him. He'd asked for a drink of it prior, and was told he was too young. So he stole one of the bottles and chugged it. We didn't know this until then, but apparently he'd been stealing alcohol for some time before his first arrest. And he kept a hidden stash somewhere that slowly ran out as he only touched it little by little, and even sold some of it to other kids in the neighborhood. He didn't get in massive trouble. Just got sent to his room for the night after he said he stole the booze because he was just really craving it, and it was New Year's. His brothers admitted to their parents about his stash, and showed them where it was hidden. It was a plastic tub in the crawl space under the house. When confronted about how they got all the alcohol, my two younger nephews admitted to following their brother's lead and only stole one beer at a time or poured some hard alcohol from its original bottle into another bottle little by little. And then the biggest bomb. They had been sneaking into other people's houses and doing the same thing all over the neighborhood. Their way of breaking in was to look for unlocked doors and windows, no houses with dogs because they'd bark, and the youngest would crawl in through windows because he was the smallest. And then he'd unlock the doors to let his brothers in. They made sure not to steal anything big from inside the houses, so they could come back multiple times. But after they got arrested last year, they realized they didn't enjoy being thieves anymore. And were just following their brother's lead, like they'd said before. Of course, the kids were in trouble for not admitting any of that until then. And despite trying to keep it secret, word still got around somehow. It confirmed some of the suspicions of the neighbors. Considering how good my nephews were at being cat burglars, you'd think they'd have been more mindful of cameras. Or perhaps they just figured old Uncle Yam would never get cameras. But after my nephews were exposed as thieves, a few of my and my sister's neighbors got cameras too. The punishment for admitting how they stole stuff was minor for my nephews. It was kinda redundant for the eldest because he's still in trouble with being on probation and whatnot. And he hadn't tried to steal anything else until he took the bottle of champagne. My bill started giving him lots of mint gum to chew to help with his cravings, because it was what he used to help cut back on drinking himself. And it kinda helped. Bill also started keeping all his booze locked in a padlocked fridge in the garage. He suspects his son tried to get into it once. All of that aside, things didn't seem so bad until my eldest nephew got in a fight at school in February. I'm told he didn't start it. But another kid picked on him until they started swinging fists. He got his two front teeth knocked out by the bully when he got his face slammed into a locker. There ended up being a reason why for this attack. My younger nephews told me their older brother had a number of targets to pick on at school before getting arrested. He was apparently the typical bully people picture when they think of one. He stole things from other kids, aimed for the small and the weak, smacked them around when no one was looking, and on more than one occasion used a small knife to stab bike tires. Well, the big brother of a kid he'd previously picked on went after him. And that boy messed him up. Both of his top front teeth were knocked out, and his nose was broken. He had to be taken to the hospital, and an emergency oral surgeon had to put his teeth back in which also required special braces to hold them in place. His nose also had to be reset, and he was put in a neck brace. The poor boy didn't want to be seen by anyone for months. No one pressed charges. Believe me, I've asked many times as to why not. But the other kid's parents paid at least half of the cost for my nephew's treatments for his teeth and nose through their insurance. That's what they told me anyway. 
My sister and Bill's health insurance sucked for covering the rest though, and they had a high copay. They didn't bother to file anything because they didn't want to be in court again, and the other parents only paid as much as they did because they didn't want to be sued. I contributed a bit to the cost too. I still had the $500 they'd given me in cash after I sued them, and decided to give it back to them to help ease the cost a little. They won't tell me how much it cost to get my nephew's nose fixed and two front teeth put back in. But after that, I think they may have had no savings left. When I saw my nephew after the incident, his face was messed up, and his front teeth were wired in place. He refused to return to school and did all his remaining lessons online with a school-provided laptop. The boy who beat him up I was told, received nothing more than a two-week suspension. I won't deny I was upset. But at the same time, I know this only happened because my nephew was a bully to other kids. What goes around, does still eventually come around. We're in summer now, and my eldest nephew is still a shut in most of the time. He'll go out bike riding alone for an hour or two. But other than that, he generally keeps to himself in his room. There have been talks from my sister and Bill of moving closer to his parents after their son's probation is up. And I don't blame them. Practically the whole neighborhood hates them now. So they want out as soon as they can afford it. Which unfortunately may take another year or so to pull off. I have been spending more time with my two younger nephews. And they are doing a lot better now. They're more respectful and have been allowed back in my home. Nothing has gone missing, and I enjoy spending time with them watching movies and playing games. They've become good kids again. And they're trying to make up for their mistakes. On the rare occasion I see my eldest nephew, he is not cold to me anymore. He even brought his bike to me for repairs once. But he's a boy a few words now. Almost stoically silent these days. I do know that when he's 18, he wants to be far away from here. We've suggested trade school. And he's not against the idea. Beyond that, I've been doing my best not to overstep as an uncle. So that's it. After all this time, I may have nothing more to write here.